most of you, if not all of you, have at least some time in your life heard about the five loaves in the wilderness and, the, and Jesus speaking to the crowds. And then he says, uh, go and get them something to eat. And he says, all we've got is a couple of pieces of bread and two fish. And he says, well, then bring them here to me and I will transform them and everybody will be able to eat. The, the, uh, the translation here they give is they, were, they ate and they were satisfied. In Greek, we have echorstasthisan, which means like absolutely filled to the brim. I mean, you get invited to any Greek's house, or Italian, I guess, for that matter, and when you leave, you can't even move. And this is the translation. Leaving, saying I'm satisfied, means, okay, I had a small piece of steak, and eh, that's, all I, that's all that I, uh, I really want more, but I'm too embarrassed to, uh, or too prideful to say anything else. But here the word we have is literally stuffed like Homer Simpson, and I've got to open up my belt, all right? So, the reason, what is the reason for this? Why, why do the disciples make that point to say, san? Why do they say that? Why do they just say satisfied? You know, they ate and they were satisfied. It gets the point across. No, it doesn't get the point across is because this is a foreshadowing of the divine liturgy. Because later on, what do we hear? We hear him say then, he took the five loaves, he looked up to heaven, he blessed, broke, and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowd. This is clearly a foreshadowing of what's happened in the liturgy, of what happens every week in the liturgy. So what do I do? You see me when I lift up the lamb and I say, the holy things are for the holy. I lift up the bread and I, and I give it back to God. I'm blessing it. So the church always follows the example of what Jesus did. And Jesus gave us that example. So here, and what do I do? I take the lamb and I break it. And I say, the lamb of God is broken, but not divided. So, so not only do I lift it up and give thanks to the Lord, but I break it just as Jesus did here. And then what happens is now I give it to my disciples. And, and if this were a true Orthodox service, then the deacons would receive it and the deacons would come out and you would commune then from the deacons. So we have the exact replication here in the liturgy as what we had in the service today. But equally so, my main point that I was bringing out was the idea of why say overly stuffed. And in fact, to the point that there were pieces that were left over and then they had to collect them. So, so of 5,000 men and then, and then uncounted men and women, there was plenty that were left over. In our liturgy, what it talks about is it talks about, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you for the remission of sins. Again, sending us back to what, what we have here in the fishes and the loaves. And then I say, drink of this, all of you, this is my new blood. And it says, which is shed for you and for many. But that's not the word that's here. In Greek, what do I say? Be it exaftu pandes, drink of this, all of you. Tuto esito emamu, it's my blood, okay? And then it says, to iperimon ke polon ihenomenon. Ihenomenon means that it's filled to the brim and overflowing. What you are receiving is the abundance of the grace of the Holy Spirit. And there's the tie in, because the word that's used there for satisfied means that God is so full of grace. And that what Jesus did there as God more than amply supplied the nourishment that they needed. And the church, as the mother, understands that and they put that into the liturgy and talk about this idea, not the idea, but the reality, I should say, the reality that 
that this overly satisfied to overabundance is placed right in our liturgy with the word echinomenon, to be overflowing with the grace that we are going to receive from what we partake in. So because of this, communion for us as Orthodox is essential to salvation. This is partly how we receive the grace of the all Holy Spirit. The grace of God is through this communion, which is overflowing from God's grace given to us. And, and so we interpret it literally as Jesus did on the Mount when he fed the disciples the bread and the fish. And what he did there is replicated almost word for word in our liturgy. So we have to understand and appreciate the fact that us receiving communion, and I say receiving, I hear some people say, I'm, I'm going to take communion. Please don't say that. You don't take communion. You receive it. It is something that is given to you. So when you come and you receive communion, you are receiving that overabundance of grace. And that's what gives us the strength so that we can handle the world's problems that we face the minute that liturgy is over and we walk out that door and we face all the problems and issues and crime and suffering and torture and all of that. And how do we deal with that? Through that abundance of grace that God has given us. And so for that, our divine liturgy and our holy communion is essential for our salvation, not only in heaven, but also here on earth to make sure that we have the grace to be able to say, peace be unto you.